I'm back. Um, first, uh, before I get into this vlog, I want to apologize for the absence. There was like a shit ton of drama that I'm not going to get into yet. Maybe I will at some point. Uh, and a shitload of things in my personal life. Um, but ultimately, um, I, I wanted to make sure that when I did come back, uh, I could reliably be on schedule. So this is that, this is me being reliably on schedule from now on. <laughs> I gotta tell you, uh, I did that thing where I kept on saying I was back and then not being back. Uh, and that's fucking bullshit. And I definitely need to not do that. So, with that in mind, daily vlogs are back, and so will the vlog stream be back. Um, the subject of today's, though, is a big, fat, steaming cup of I told you so for all the people who claimed that I was full of shit on some of this vaccine stuff and COVID stuff, etc. Um, now... First off, I want to acknowledge the elephant in the room, and that is, yes, I am breaking out more because it is the uh, height of summer, and whenever it's this time of year, I have worse acne. I don't think I'll ever stop that because, like, I overproduce hormones and I'm bipolar, so. I have bad genes for not doing that. Um, but, you know, I'm still gonna, the show must go on. I'm not gonna put it off because of that. Um, but, like, the general vibe I want to give off in this, uh, in this, uh, vlog today is that I've been talking about some of this stuff for a really long time, um, and specifically the COVID stuff, like, the beginning of last year, I was already saying a lot of this stuff that is now allowed to be said, like, Bill Maher. Uh, saying that people should uh, resist the lockdowns and, you know, have fun as kids and shit like that, right? <laughs> um, and, um, and a variety of other people saying that maybe the lab leak hypothesis that I was called insane and stupid for um, was true, you know, like, Jon Stewart and a bunch of other mainstream people are saying it, and now it's suddenly okay to at least say it. To believe it? You can't believe it. That's against the rules. If you believe it, if you're not just asking questions, if you believe it, you're a crackpot conspiracy theorist, Rand Paul, acolyte of the anti-vaxxers, religious fundy, Trump train QAnon. That enough to get this video taken down, those buzzwords? Because I'm against, like, a significant amount of that. Um, and I still think that the fact that there is a biosafety level 4 lab in Wuhan is like kind of some of the stuff I was talking about a year and a half ago. And also... The guy who wrote the commission on uh, bioweapons for the U.S. government. He was saying that, and that's why I was saying that. I didn't know about this lab until he brought it up. You know? Um, but I get to be wrong. I get to be the insane, awful, evil conspiracy theorist. Uh, but hey, I got gains. <laughs> the past The past year... Uh, my, my excellent diet has not only prevented me from getting sick, my diet and exercise and uh, sleep routine has not only prevented me from getting sick for years now, but has also prevented me from uh, being a bitch because I've gotten gains. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, and, and, and now I can sort of like twitch my pecs like I, I'm close to being able to do like a pec dance, but not quite yet. Um... But the point that I'm trying to make here is that, like, you know, it's been a long time, and I've been, you know, right about the things that I said. 
and 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 just to drive it home, uh, today I got sent this tweet from somebody named Henrik Palmgren. Um, so I don't like this guy, you know. I don't like Red Ice TV, um, and I don't like the fact that this is only being shared. This kind of thing is only being shared by people like that. Um, so I gave people an alternative by linking them to all of my pieces on this exact subject from an anarchist site. So just to be clear, I don't endorse the person that I QT'd. Uh, but the tweet that he said was, the World Health Organization has just released a guiding document for digital vaccine certificate that will be blockchain based. This will be used to implement a vaccine passport in every country. It's funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Rockefeller Foundation. <gasps> sound familiar? You know, sound like something that I said in an in interview with a doctor named Ryan Underhill. You know, sound like some things that I've been writing in articles for a long time now. Sound like maybe the things that I've been saying. I mean, for those of you who've been here for a while, uh, you already know that this is the case. You already know that I've been on this. But, you know, for those of you who are just getting here and uh, seeing my annoying ass mug and, and listening to me be smug like this... You probably are pretty annoyed. But you should be more annoyed that your government is doing this and working with these people to do it. Um, so here's the thing he released. Digital documentation of COVID-19 certificates, vaccination status, technical specifications, and implementation guidance. 27th August, 2021. Um... This is from the World Health Organization, the same people who ran the simulation uh, that basically predicted most of this. Uh, and I use predicted very loosely because we know, we know. The Center for Implementation and Innovation in Health Policies, Buenos Aires, Argentina, Elizabeth Peloso, uh, Liz Pelo Peloso Consulting Incorporated, Alain Poi, World Health Organization, Magdalena Rabini, World Health Organization, Maria Sok, Path, Somia uh, Swaminathan, I think that's how you would pronounce that, WHO, Martha, uh, Martha Volandia, WHO, Petra Wilson, health connect partners and all members and observers of the smart vaccination certification working group. This work was funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates foundation, the government of Estonia foundation, Bodnar, the state of Kuwait and the Rockefeller foundation. The views of the funding bodies have not influenced the content of this document. Yeah, sure. So, it goes on to say, in the context of the coronavirus disease, the concept of digital documentation of COVID-19 certificates is proposed as a mechanism by which a person's COVID-19 related health data can be digitally documented via an electronic certificate. A digital vaccination certificate that documents a person's current vaccination status to protect against COVID-19 can then be used for continuity of care as or as proof of vaccinations for purposes other than healthcare. The resulting artifact of this approach is referred to as the Digital Documentation of COVID-19 Certificates Vaccination Status, DDCC colon VS. The current document is written for the ongoing global COVID-19 pandemic. Thus, the approach is architected to respond to the evolving science and to the immediate needs of countries in this rapidly changing context. For this reason, 
The document is issued as an interim guidance. The approach could eventually be extended to capture vaccination status to protect against other diseases. The document is part of a series of guidance documents on digital documentation of COVID-19 related data of interest, vaccination status, this document, laboratory test results, and history of SARS-CoV-2 infection. The World Health Organization has developed this guidance and accompanying technical specifications in collaboration with a multidisciplinary group of partners and experts in order to support WHO member states in adopting interoperable standards for recording vaccination status. The audience of this document is therefore member states and their implementing partners that want to put in place digitally signed vaccination records. So it then goes on to go into the blockchain that it's going to be using and how it will all be permanent and on a hash, right? So I told you so. I really did. And for all those of you who don't know who I am or what I'm talking about and think you're just listening to a crazy person, I, I, I posted in response. This was my post. Man, if only someone had warned people this would happen. And if only had people would have listened and boosted the message. Again, told y'all. And I linked four pieces that I wrote on the subject. The first piece that I wrote on agorisnexus.com. Panopticon Rising, COVID-19 and the Elite Enslavement Plan. The second piece, Let Our People Go, the medical case for reopening society. The third, 10 ways the government's COVID response worsened your health. And the fourth, The Great Reset, exploiting disease for profit and power. Now, this is uh, <laughs> this is is a thing that goes back, you know. Um, so my first article, uh, I wrote that article March thirty first, twenty twenty, and I had already been tweeting about it for a long time. You can't see that because the tweet is gone along with my entire Twitter account. They censored me. Even though I'm anti-Trump, they censored me along with the Trump supporters during the Q purge, which was really just as I went over in another vlog, an excuse for them to censor those they had wanted to censor for a while and build watch lists and FBI forward arrest lists. Um, that's what it was for. They wanted to database you, and it worked. But they couldn't do that with me because my things were just words, and American citizens can't be arrested for words, except when they can and totally are, like, a lot. Uh, so they just censored me. That's all they did. And why? Well, because I was tweeting things like this. Including things like, you know, the Economist article where it showed you as a good widow doggy dog on a leash being piloted by doctors, which were being piloted by the big government financial elites. And this is what they want you to think. The Economist is owned by wealthy families that are deeply entrenched and highly connected. That's what they want you to think. They want you to think this. They want you to accept it. They want this to be a thing that they said that you accept uncritically. So, what else did I say? Uh, I also went over the fact that um, this is a massive power grab uh, designed to empower uh, the military, specifically the domestic military, including hyperfunding the Pentagon and cops and shit. Uh, and allowing them to build more surveillance infrastructure, like more 5G towers and shit. So, just to be super clear, um, this this video is probably going to get taken down. Follow me on library, 
at Insanity is free. Uh, in case this video and or my channel get taken down. Uh, but let me just get to this then. Uh, for two years now, this is a quote from my article, Microsoft has been the founding partner to another organization which goes by the name ID2020. Peggy Johnson, Executive VP Business Development, Microsoft Corporation, has this to say about the partnership. Quote, Closing the identity gap is an enormous challenge. It will take the work of many committed people and organizations coming together across different geogra geographies, geographies, national geographies, sectors, and technologies. But it's exciting to imagine a world where safe and secure digital identities are possible, providing everyone with an essential building block to every right and opportunity they deserve. Now that 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 sort of you know end quote kind of sounds nice on the surface, especially when they couch it in globalism, uh, where they're trying to say this is targeted toward minorities and poor people in poor countries that poor 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 poor. We're trying to give them an ID that they can use anywhere, and this ID that they can use anywhere will help them access what they need, their rights and opportunities. But then you realize that this is going everywhere, because of course it is, and that when this happens, it'll be necessary for your rights too, and you start to realize that it might be a little bit fucking insidious maybe you start to realize that maybe this isn't a good thing that people should want. Uh, because then you'll need this to access every right and opportunity. Um, so just to get back to reading my article, here's my statement. How does she plan on closing that gap? And what is ID2020? ID2020 is a universal ID system they've been building for years. The official website says it will, quote, live with you from life to death, end quote, and that it will be, quote, accessible anywhere you happen to be through multiple methods, end quote. They bemoan that, quote, 1.1 billion people worldwide live without a digital ID, end quote, and that identity is neither portable nor persistent. A couch this in human rights, essential services, economic opportunity, assisting those in need, gender equality, and global development. They cite a 2015 UN declaration that they'd, quote, provide legal identity for all, including birth registration by 2030, and directly state that, quote, the rapid proliferation of smart devices globally combined with ever-increasing computing power and rapidly expanding broadband coverage enables new methods of registration and facilitates ongoing interaction between individuals and their identity data. They say, quote, new technologies, including blockchain, when used in conjunction with long proven technologies such as biometrics, now make it possible for all people to have access to a safe, verifiable and persistent form of identity, end quote. Are you seeing red flags? Good. It gets worse. Um, I want you to read that article, so I'm not going to do too much in that regard. But what I will say uh, is that <laughs> this 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 has been in the works for a long time, and I've been blowing the whistle. Uh, I said, let's look at the side project of the ID2020 ID founders Accenture, the Digital Dollar Project. Their claim in bold letterhead on their official site is that they're leading the discussion on a U.S. central bank digital currency. They claim... To ensure the dollar can serve the broadest possible range of uses in an increasingly digital global economy, and thereby maintain its privileged position and support orderly adjustment in international monetary relations, consideration needs to be given to plans to adopt a digital dollar issued by the Federal Reserve System. End quote. Their project directors include David Treat, Senior Managing Director, Co-Lead of Accenture's Blockchain Business, and Accenture Lead of the New York Fintech Innovation Lab. Funny. 
Accenture blockchain attached to a universal blockchain-based identification system. Reliant on prints and or facial recognition is being pushed as a way to help administer vaccines. It's set up for release in a year. Which so happens to have an overhyped pandemic unnecessarily overloading the healthcare system and being used as an excuse to push martial law. This pandemic is also being used as an excuse to amp up defense production to a fascist degree, with the idea of suspension of habeas corpus being seriously kicked around. While people are indoors, infrastructure is being installed which would enable government to widely implement 5G, a thing used in China in order to mass control the population. This 5G is used there to enable a facial tracking biometrics ready super state control grid. This all comes alongside the Earn It Act, banning encryption that I discussed in my encryption article. All of it came exactly a year into a campaign by many social media giants and governments to mock and silence anyone, even remotely anti-vax, anti-5G, or really anti-government at all. The most recent high-profile example being Zero Hedged. It happened after the Denver International Airport remodeled. Converting, covering the murals they had had up for years, which appeared to depict mass death prior to world government and peace, after they installed a laughing gargoyle to mock truthers. It happened a year after Bilderberg's topics were a stable strategic order, what next for Europe, climate change and sustainability, China, Russia, the future of capitalism, Brexit, the ethics of artificial intelligence, the weaponization of social media, the importance of space, and cyber threats. Nothing to see here. So, I wrote that a year ago. And it's here now. It's here now. People didn't believe me. But it's here now. I wrote that a year ago. And it's here now. So, just to get that out of the way, you know... I then went on to make an article uh, a couple months later about why we should reopen society. How, like, all these doctors were saying that, you know, this is a bad approach, it's not really necessary. But that it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know? Because what what the elites want isn't health, peace, prosperity. They don't want that. And that's why I could write this article in November last year, 10 ways the government's COVID response worsened your health. Going into the fact that like, you know, maybe we shouldn't be stressing each other out. Maybe we shouldn't be staying inside. Maybe we shouldn't be ordering a bunch of fucking takeout. Maybe... We shouldn't be hyper-sanitizing everything. Maybe we shouldn't be staying away from other people and pathogens. Maybe we shouldn't be staying sedentary and not going out for the normal fitness we do. Maybe we shouldn't be overburdening the healthcare system and claiming that they can't do any other work if they're doing COVID work, which is what led to empty hospitals. Maybe we should be like including alternative medicine in our own personal lifestyles and having good diets and exercise and shit. Maybe the state is the problem and not the solution. Maybe, maybe. Right? But that's not good enough, right? It wasn't good enough when fucking Flint, Michigan started to get literal Robocop helmets where they're literally scanning your temperature and all of your biometric data to figure out whether or not you're a criminal and also scanning a bunch of license plates and a bunch of other things. Not like they're using disease as a way to interfere in social relations. Not like they're using this as a way to get more power, isolate money to the corporate class, isolate power to those the state deems fit. Nah, it couldn't be any of that, which is why you definitely shouldn't read an article, which I'm not going to go into here,
called the Great Reset, exploiting disease for profit and power. All these can be available on agorisnexus.com. Um, and with all that in mind, I feel like it's valuable to point out that people are being insane with this. A security guard just shot somebody in a store because they weren't wearing a mask. Which is a greater threat to life? A guy not wearing a mask or a fucking bullet? Which is, I don't think it's a valuable exchange. I don't think you should be able to shoot somebody because they didn't wear a mask. Am I insane? Maybe. Probably. Look at me. I'm fucking insane. Of course I am. You can't trust anything that comes out of this guy's mouth. Right? Of course I'm insane. Of course. Um, and just, you know, to make matters worse, um, th there's a woman who had dual custody with her husband. Uh, well, her ex-husband, anyway. And when she told people that she was unvaccinated, the court stripped her of her parental rights and forced the child to stay with the person who was. This is only the beginning, people. I'm going to read this article. Uh, Fox, uh, Fox 5 um, in Chicago. Fox 32 was the, the video source, but... Um, the decision has apparently been reversed, so that's good, right? But the, the, the article reads, a Chicago mother says a Cook County judge has taken away her parental rights after learning that she is not vaccinated against COVID-19. What all parties are, agree is a very unusual and perhaps unprecedented step a judge at Chicago's Daily Center has stripped Rebecca Furlitt of custody because she refuses to get a vaccination shot. I miss my son more than anything. It's been very difficult. I haven't seen him since August 10th, Furlitt told Fox 32 in an exclusive interview. That's the day Furlitt appeared in court via Zoom along with her ex-husband, for a child support hearing on Zoom involving their 11-year-old son. Child support hearing on Zoom! The two have been divorced for seven years and share custody and parenting time. She says, out of the blue... Cook County Judge James Shapiro asked her whether she had been vaccinated. Furlitt told Shapiro she had not because she has bad reactions to vaccines in the past. Shapiro then ordered that Furlitt be stripped of all parenting time with her son until she gets it. Over the past two weeks, Furlitt has been able to talk to her son on the phone and through video calls, but has not seen him in person. Quote, I think that it's wrong, I think that it's dividing families, and I think that it's not in my son's best interests to be away from his mother. Furlitt is now appealing the court order, saying the judge has no business taking away her parenting rights simply because she's not vaccinated. No shit. Quote, it had nothing to do with what we were talking about. He was placing his views on me and taking my son away from me. You know? So, it's been reversed. But only because there was mass freakouts and people held these people accountable. These fucking monsters. Who will strip people of parenting ability. I, will, I won't say rights personally. I was quoting an article, but they still have the rights. Even if the government wants to fucking threaten them. Um... Parenting ability, 
because they won't comply. You won't be able to travel to a different country. You won't be able to travel to a different state. You won't be able to walk in your town. You won't be able to do business in certain places. You won't be able to use public services like transit and, 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 and the DMV and shit without doing what they say. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Does it sound familiar that maybe a certain old dusty book had some things to say about this? That maybe this is a problem that people have been foreseeing for a long time? Because I think it's kind of a fucking problem. I'm angry because I've been watching this happen for a while. They want a permanent system of identification and they want you on it. Why? Why do they want you on this permanent system of identification? Because then they can have this identification li linked to a permanent privacy-free dollar that they'll create on a blockchain. So all your transactions are permanent and visible only to them. They'll do it in conjunction with facial recognition cameras and shot spotters and lasers that can detect your heart rate and a cell phone economy that can like hear and detect everything you're doing and Pokemon Go players that are running around being surveillance drones for the CIA through Niantic. They'll do all of that. They'll do it. Because they want control. And they want it to be absolutely clear that when the dollar, as it exists, collapses, you're going to accept the UBI. You're going to accept the welfare state that they're building. You're going to accept whatever they tell you to accept because you don't want to fucking die. And you don't want to lose access to your family. And you don't want to lose access to your livelihood. And you don't want to lose access to society or friends. You don't want to lose any of that. So you'll comply or you will lose access. It's a fucking problem. Yeah. I think I'm back. I think it's necessary for people to be angry at this stuff and know enough about it that they can lay it out. So feel free to like, share, and subscribe. All that good stuff. And I'll see you next time on this channel. Fucking smash the state.